Hello and welcome back to the next episode in our hilarious mini computer restoration extravaganza thing that we're working on here. In the previous episode we pulled the absolutely massive drives out and got them on the workbench and I want to continue trying to strip these chassis down as much as we can. And so this is the main chassis sitting here next to me and you'll notice that I've got it uh, flipped around so we're looking at the back side of it. And I've got it flipped around because today I want to pull the power supply out and the power supply is on this uh, really cool little door that just kind of swings open here and then it's all stuffed behind this uh, mesh covering here this little grate thing and so uh, I'm not entirely sure what's going on inside but looking through the mesh it looks like it could be fairly simple I'm not entirely sure so the only way to find out is to uh, just pull it off of the machine and uh, take it apart and take a look at it. And, uh, of course, we're, we're not going to put any power into it with it plugged into anything until we're absolutely certain that everything inside of there is copacetic. So uh, let's, let's get started. Let's pull this power supply off of the chassis. All right, before we pull this uh, power supply unit off of the chassis, I, I just got to talk about these little latches here. Uh, th they look like just regular old little turn latches that when you, when you turn them up like this, it uh, goes behind the main chassis and holds this in place. Except that inside of it is a screw. And so if you keep turning it, the latch cinches down holding it very tight. And then when you loosen it up, you can uh, loosen it up and the, the latch comes right on out and so it can sit a lot looser. And so that's a very, just, I think that's just the coolest latch design ever. <laughs> it's so interesting and, and kind of an elegant solution for allowing you to open this up quickly, but also allowing you to secure it very tightly. That's just, I, it was so cool, I, I couldn't not show it to you guys. <laughs> All right, we've got all the screws removed and this little mesh plate is ready to come off. So let's just go ahead and slide that right off. Oh man. So at first glance, there's a lot more going on in here than I, I was expecting. Uh, we have a transformer that weighs about nine and a half million pounds. <laughs> It's huge. It's absolutely massive. It weighs a ton. And then we have this huge heat sink with some power transistors on it. Then we've got this massive PCB in the back here. I wasn't expecting that at all. We're going to have to uh, get this plate off so that we can get a better look at it. And then we've got a couple huge capacitors right here <laughs> with a whole lot of wires going to them. And then we've got a fantastic relay up front here. There is so much more going on here than I was expecting. So let's get this side panel off and see if we can get a better look at this PC board in here and, and maybe we can get a little bit of an idea of, of what it's doing. All right, here we go. That's awesome. All right, so just by looking at the cover plate here, we know that we have five volts, 12 volts, negative 12 volts, and 24 volts. And we know that those are adjustable. And we can see the four potentiometers for adjusting that right here. Uh, but <laughs> there's a lot more going on in here than I was expecting. <laughs> there's some rather large capacitors here. These are 6,000 microfarads. And then we have a 4,700 microfarad down here. Uh, just I just noticed this, the capacitors, their legs are very precisely bent in exact shapes so that they can fit the through holes in the PCB. I've never seen that done before. Uh, I, I don't know why they didn't just extend the traces on the bottom so that the legs could just go straight through. This seems like it's uh, a little overkill. <laughs> 
All right, well, I had to uh, relocate inside because it, it was just way too hot outside. Uh, we went from uh, mild to extra spicy seemingly overnight here in Texas, and just sitting still, I was just pouring sweat. But now that it was inside, I started poking and prodding and trying to get a handle on what exactly was going on inside of this power supply. And so the first thing I wanted to figure out was how exactly power was getting from the wall to the primary coil of the transformer, which is all the way in the back corner over there. And that sounds like it should be relatively easy to figure out. Just follow the mains wire over to the transformer. But there's actually a lot of stuff that's kind of sitting in between the transformer and the power that's coming in. And also there's these extra plugs on the outside that say 115 volts AC switched. And I believe that these are for powering additional devices that are connected to the system, particularly for powering up the drives. That's what these two on the side that sit inside the chassis or four, I believe. And so over the past few days, I've done a bit of following wires as best as I can without actually taking anything apart. And just to get power to the primary coil of the transformer, this is the diagram that I have come up with. We have our two wires coming in from mains input, a white wire and a black wire. And the white wire goes directly to all of the terminals that are 115 volt AC switched as well as to one side of the primary coil of the transformer and this very cool little time delay relay that's in here. And the reason I know that it's a time delay relay is that I found this little sticker that has some information about the relay. Between this sticker and the markings that are on the front of the relay, I can kind of get an idea that the, the relay itself is powered directly off of mains, uh, which, which we saw by tracing out the wires, and that it has a time delay of 66 seconds, just a one minute delay. Now this is an excellent time for me to say, I don't have a clue what I'm doing. <laughs> I am fortunate enough that this uh, power supply looks to be in excellent shape, so I shouldn't have to do much troubleshooting or repairing. Uh, but I am extremely unqualified to talk about power supply design. I don't really know a whole lot about it. I've never actually built a power supply myself, and I've even never actually had to troubleshoot a power supply. Uh, for all my personal projects, I just use a, a modern power supply that I stuffed in a wood box. Um, there's just an overabundance of really cheap switch mode power supplies that are very reliable that I haven't had a need to learn much about power supply design. So looking through this was extremely interesting, but I am well out of my depth here. So everything that I say and show from this moment on should be assumed to be incorrect in some manner. <laughs> But I know that a lot of you out there know a ton about power supply design. So if you guys catch something that I miss, or if you just have any additional information, please let me know in the comments. I really want to learn more about this. And this is an excellent opportunity. So having said all of that, we've got our time delay relay that essentially kicks on as soon as we flip the power switch and the breaker. So we can see that coming out of the coil of our time delay relay, we go to the power switch, and this is the key power switch that's on the front of the unit. And then coming out of that power switch, we come all the way back to the main breaker here. That's these two black boxes here. And then that goes all the way back over to the black wire of our mains input. And so in order to power this power supply up, you need to make sure that the main breaker is on, then flip the key to turn the power switch on, and then wait 66 seconds for the time delay relay to kick over and make connection. And when it does, we now have a connection from the white wire through the primary winding of our main power transformer, through the contacts of our time delay relay, through the power switch, through the breaker, and then all the way back over to mains. And that's how we get our power on circuit. Now, I'm not entirely sure what the purpose of the time delay relay is. As far as I can tell, absolutely nothing in this power supply receives any power at all until the time delay relay kicks over. So I'm sure that there is some obvious reason that a 60 second time delay is needed, but I, I can't see it here. <laughs> 
But once power is on and the time to delay relay is kicked over, we now have the transformer generating our AC voltage that we're going to regulate down to four separate voltages that are used for the computer. And that all happens on this PC board on the end here. The PCB itself is essentially split into four different sections, one for each power rail. So on the bottom right over here, we've got the 24 volt section. Then on the top, we have the plus 12 volt and minus 12 volt sections. And then on the bottom left here, we've got the plus five volt sections. Uh, looking at the PC board itself, we were kind of able to see some patterns. And uh, well, I got curious about what this IC was. And it's the same IC used for all four power sections. And that IC is the LM723. And we can see this is the Texas Instruments datasheet for that IC. And it is a voltage regulator IC. But what's really interesting about this voltage regulator is that it can be used as a linear or a switching regulator. And that is the first time I've ever seen an IC that can be used as one or the other. It's really kind of crazy. Now there's an excellent article about this IC over on hackaday.com. So definitely go read that article. The uh, author plays with figuring out how to use it as a switching regulator because this IC is primarily used as a linear regulator. Uh, and for our application here, for this power supply unit, I believe that this IC is used as a linear regulator for all four power rails. Now the IC itself is a bit beyond me. If we take a look at the second page of the data sheet here, we can see an equivalent circuit. There's uh, an interesting collection of things going on here. But what this data sheet is really going to help us find out is that it gives a list of a bunch of example circuits in the back of it. So we can see here it says typical applications. And they have different ways of laying out this IC to achieve the different types of regulation. And so I can kind of get an idea of the type of regulator that is being used on our PCB by taking a look at how the circuit is laid out for us and then comparing it against these circuits in here. Now, I obviously don't expect them to correspond one to one, but if we can find enough similarities, we can kind of get an idea at least. And so that's what I set out to do. I started uh, tracing out the traces on the PC board because they were pretty visible, even though there's a lot of wires in the way on the backside. And I started trying to follow how each one was set up. And this was what I came up with. Now keep in mind that this is probably extremely incorrect, uh, but also it's extremely incomplete as well. I only traced out enough to try and get an idea of what type of regulation was being used for each of the power rails. So here we have the plus 12 volt, minus 12 volt, and plus 24 volt regulators. They're all set up pretty much identical. Now the transistor I didn't look up and so I just put a transistor here. I just used an NPN. That could be a PNP, could be an NPN, could be a MOSFET, who knows? I, I didn't really check. All I know is that there was uh, three pins of a transistor there so I just grabbed the first model that was at hand. Other than that, I believe it is fairly close to what is on the board itself. And the big thing to notice here is that the voltage reference line and the non-inverting input are tied directly together. So if we take a look at our typical applications in the data sheet and we scroll through it, we can see that there is a positive voltage regulator with an external NPN pass transistor that has the voltage reference line and the non-inverting line tied together. And you know, this says with an external NPN pass transistor. And that makes sense because we have this massive heat sink up here that has a bunch of external NPN pass transistors on it. So I am gonna go out on a limb here and say that for the minus 12 volt rail, plus 12 volt rail, and plus 24 volt rail, we're using a voltage regulator that is set up pretty similarly to what is shown here. 
So that's awesome. I was starting to feel really confident in my ability to kind of guess my way through how this uh, PC board was laid out. And then I took a look at the five volt section and it was totally different. And there's a lot more going on. And the little diagram that I drew here doesn't include hardly any of that. I just drew it out far enough to try and get an idea of how this LM723 was being used for the five volt rail. So if we look at the comp pin and the inverting input pin, we can see that they're tied directly to each other through a capacitor, but they're not tied to ground or anything else. Now that was interesting because if we look through our example circuits that are shown here, uh, well, we can see that there's only one that has that set up like that, and that is the positive floating regulator. Now, this was extra weird to me. There was enough in common with what I was able to trace out and this for me to start believing that this was the type of regulator that was being used for the five volt rail. But the point of the positive floating regulator is that the ground is not at ground. The ground is floating, which allows you to uh, regulate voltage in reference to your floating ground. This is a really weird way to use a linear regulator. I've never actually seen this done before. So maybe you guys can give me some information about what kind of regulator this is. Maybe I'm just totally off the mark here. I'll put some high resolution photos of the PC board and the backside of it down below. So if you guys are really curious, you can kind of take a look at it yourselves because really I have I have no clue what's going on here. But all of this was really just for fun to try and help me figure out what exactly was going on inside of here. Because as, as much as I love using things, I love figuring out how they work even more. So I've had a ton of fun digging through this. And I would love to power it on, but I don't trust these electrolytics that are on here. So we'll replace these when I replace all of the electrolytics on the main computer boards as well, just to be safe. And so there we go. That's the power supply out of the Centurion mini computer. It is very over engineered. I absolutely love it. I think it is fantastic looking and it looks really, really clean inside. So that bodes well for this thing powering up and working. I don't see any obviously burned out components. So I am very hopeful that this is gonna put out very smoothly regulated power on those four voltage rails. I would absolutely love to hear any insight at all that y'all may have on this power supply. I think it's absolutely fascinating and it's an excellent case study for me to learn more about power supply design. So any information you guys have, if you could just leave a quick comment, I would absolutely love to see it. I read every single comment and I try to reply to everybody. So I would love to hear your thoughts on this power supply. But in the meantime, I am 99% sure that all of the capacitors in here are completely discharged, so there's no better time than now to stick my fingers in and out of the circuit and try to get an idea of what's going on. So I'm going to keep prodding around the inside of this, trying to get an idea of what I'm looking at, and I want to thank you guys so much for watching and joining me on this hilarious mini-computer journey, and I hope to see you in the next episode.